Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. Why is this equation called non-standard? Because we have a linear function on the right-hand side. You can also call it a polynomial. And on the left-hand side, we have the logarithmic function. So there are different kinds. So you can solve this problem by analytical methods. Okay, you can approximate the solution by using different methods, numerical methods, but we're going to be using algebra a little, and a little bit of calculus maybe, if you allow me to do that, and then solve this problem. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. There's a couple different ways to approach this problem, and at the end, I'm going to show you a graph. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and use the definition of logarithms. This is the base, and that is the exponent. So this can be written as 2 to the power 3 minus x equals x. That's what's cool about logarithms. You can turn them into exponentials, and exponentials can be turned into logarithms. So by definition, we get this equality. Let's go ahead and write the 2 to the power 3 minus x as 2 to the power 3 divided by 2 to the power x, and that should equal x. Maybe by this time you already guessed the solution, that's perfectly fine, but I want to show you, I want to bring you closer to the solution so when you're guessing, it's actually going to be very obvious. Okay? And I know this is also simple, but I just want to show the general method. So, from here, what am I getting? Let's write 2 to the third as 8. And then, let's do the following. I kind of want to multiply both sides by 2 text. Let's go ahead and cross multiply first. Allow me to do that. So that's going to give me x times 2 to the x equals 8. Maybe you've seen similar equations like this one. And I believe I've done a couple problems like this before. Anyway, so here's what I'm trying to do. I want to, actually, instead of cross multiplying, this is what I'd like to do. A fact that comes from cross multiplication. Since the product of these two things equals 8, I can switch them. So this can be written as 8 over x equals 2 to the power x. Now, why did I do that? Let me tell you first. I wanted to isolate the expression with the exponent of x. So it's on the right-hand side. And then I'll do something to get rid of that exponent. And then I'm going to have a nice expression on the left-hand side. And then I'll make it even nicer. So let's see how that goes. Uh, I really like this process. So let's go ahead and raise both sides to the power 1 over x, noticing that x cannot be 0, because if x is 0, then we don't have an equation or they're not equal. So x equals 0 is not a solution, in other words. These two cancel out, leaving us with something nice. But I, like I said earlier, I'd like to make it nicer. Okay, this is what I have. And one of the things, uh, one of the reasons why this is nice is because we were able to put all the variables on one side and a number on the other side. Make sense? So it's kind of like f of x equals 2. Make sense? So I have a function on the left-hand side in terms of x. Cool, cool. But it's not good enough. It's not nice enough. So here's what I'm going to do. My base is 8 over x, so my exponent is 1 over x. Mm, they are different. I don't like it. Why not make them the same? Can we? Absolutely. If my exponent becomes 8 over x, I'll be happier. And I believe you're going to be happier too. So here's what, how we can do it. Very easy, algebraically. That's why algebra is so cool. Raise both sides to the eighth power and boom, you're done. Isn't that great? So now 1 over x will be multiplied by 8. And this is going to give you 8 over x to the power 8 over x equals 2 to the power 8, which is 256. Great. Maybe it's not so great, but well, it's not super bad. Now, here's what I'm going to do. On the left-hand side, I have something like something to the power of the same thing, and I want to have the same thing on the right-hand side. So, in other words, can 256 be written as something like a to the power a? And it's possible. If you consider the exponential 2 to the power 8, we can do that. How? Let's go ahead and erase this. Write the 2 to the 8 as follows. 2 to the second to the fourth, because 2 times 4 equals 8. Oh, come on. This is a nice way to break down the 8, and we don't really have a lot of options. I mean, what else can you do, right? It's either 1 times 8 or 2 times 4. 
So, 2 to the second power is 4, so this becomes 4 to the power 4. Yes, we got what we wanted. So, now I have the following. And we can totally forget about this and write this as 4 to the power 4. Now, take a look at this. Isn't this nice? Now, we can safely say that, hey, 4 is a solution. I'm not saying x equals 4. I'm saying if 8 over x equals 4, then we have a solution. So, from here, 8 over x equals 4 gives us a solution. That means x equals 2. And I know, I know what you're thinking. When you saw this, you immediately thought, hey, x should be 2 because it satisfies the equation. Again, that's guessing, kind of wild guessing. This is kind of like a more educated guessing, in my opinion. Anyways, so x equals 2 is a solution. Great. But here's the million dollar question. Is that the only solution? In other words, if I have something like a to the a equals 4 to the 4, is a equals 4 the only solution? So that can be answered by graphing the function f of t equals t to the power t. And t is an awesome variable. It has a 0, I mean an open dot at 0, 1, because 0 to the power 0 does not equal 1. Don't believe people that say that. And then it kind of curves down and curves up like this. And obviously, it's going to have 1, 1 on the graph because it satisfies the equation. And then it's just going to go on forever. So when you consider, when you consider 4 to the power 4, so what f of t equals 256, what is the t value? There's a single value because if you think about the, the f of t value being that large, you're basically thinking about a horizontal line that goes like this, and it's going to intersect the graph at a single point. Make sense? Our function is, in other words, increasing on this interval, and I believe that is 1 over e, I think. Yeah. So 1 over e to infinity, our function is increasing. Therefore, it has one solution. So x equals 2 is the only solution. Isn't that great? Yes. Is there another way to look at this problem? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and take a look. Did I say uh, I'm going to show you a graph at the end? If I didn't, then I said it. So we could also look at the problem differently. Log x with base 2 equals 3 minus x, and 2 to the power 3 minus x equals x. Now take a look at this. You didn't have to complicate things. Oh, come on. Why did you do this to us, right? It's a waste of time. I could do this in 10 seconds. Okay, that's not the point. I'm kind of trying to illustrate different approaches like it or not. So now, here's the thing. We have a decreasing function. Why? Because its exponent has negative x, or it is like uh, 8 over 2 to the x. It's decreasing. And this is increasing. It's a linear function with a positive slope, so they have to intersect at a single point, test some values, you're going to notice. And of course, you can also talk about x needs to be greater than this, less than that, so on and so forth. Obviously, x is positive because this is always positive. Make sense? You could also look at it this way. f of x equals log x with base 2 is also increasing. And g of x, 3 minus x, is always decreasing. And they will have a single intersection point. And here's the graph, and we'll finish up. Yay. These two functions graph at a single point, and that's going to happen at x equals 2. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.